This is turn 29 of Degeneracy, and Mictlin has attacked me. He returned all of these items which I'd sent him, which is mostly just stuff that I'd gotten for free from events. Um, so now we are in a soft 5v1. You could say that it's uh, essentially just a 4v1 by this point, because Agartha is mostly leaving me alone by now in order to focus on uh, invading Abyssia instead, and he's doing that in the hopes that uh, everyone else is going to lose power fighting me, but that I'm still going to be kept down in the process. Um, but let's go ahead and check this out. So in this first fight, he actually loses because my Lich Queen is there, and I'd actually just moved her up to Sight Search. Um, uh, he's sending in a bunch of sacreds, and these guys are F9, or sorry, F4, B9, so very light bless, which still leaves him with a lot of scales. Uh, they also have a precision bonus from a throne that he claimed. Um, so the Blood 9 bless would be more problematic if my troops were, uh, you know, real expected to deal a lot of damage, but they're kind of not. Uh, mostly my troops are just expected to slow people down, uh, apply some fatigue for them, and all of that's still going to work just fine against uh, these jaguars. So the long dead that I'm animating with Horde of Skeletons are actually doing a lot of damage um, because they don't really have any mitigation. Um, they're just, you know, regular attack and defense scores and uh, very, very low protection. Um, so some of these guys actually get caught by um, having afflictions, others get paralyzed, and yeah, he ends up losing a little less than half, and he kills only the dispossessed spirits which had been free spawning there. Here in Fastier, I'm able to capture uh, this province here from Jomen. In the Great Dunes, I am able to beat the province defense there with those mercenaries. Here in Bakar, we see Abyssia failing terribly. Um, so this is just Abyssia expecting more out of his double-blessed sacreds than they can actually do. Um, while they are, you know, relatively strong, tanky, um, they have mediocre attack and defense scores, so they're going to get hit relatively frequently, and um, even when you have 20 protection, you're still liable to die when you're getting hit by guys with 21 damage battle axes. So the Barbarians eventually kill the uh, Sacreds, and because there's so many of them, they even go around and kill the Anathemant Dragon. So he loses one of his cap-only mages and eight of his Sacreds, and doesn't really get anything from it. Uh, here, let's see... Oh, this is um, the province that I dumped a bunch of province defense into earlier. Uh, so this one has a lot of uh, crossbows from my PD, um, but they're mostly just shooting at mercenaries and the uh, chaff which Marignan placed at the front in order to, well, get hit. So his mages are just doing some evocation, but he is also casting flaming arrows, so that's going to make even his regular archers very killy for the skeletons. And you can kind of see that there, that like wherever the flaming arrows land, uh, the skeletons kind of just evaporate. Solar rays also helps a bit, of course. Uh, many of these mercenaries uh, die from my own province defense, um, shooting back at them, and then many of the others rout, and any routed mercenaries are not going to show up anymore. So he does at least take a couple losses there, but because it's mostly these mercenaries, they're not like actually permanent losses, it just reduces the value of rebidding them. Here in the Sodden Merc, I'm able to successfully raid Atlantis' province, and this is again just fighting province defense with a um, skeleton spamming raider. Uh, so this is just basically like a solo mage who's going to be making uh, skeletons to do the actual killing. Um, but I also have a reasonable number of ghosts here, and they're able to... Uh, do quite well against just these militia and light infantry guys. Uh, some of the light infantry um, get stuck on the skeletons here, and I even lose one ghost to them right there, um, but the uh, rest of the ghosts have already gone past the routed militia and are now getting to the archers and backline. So um, yeah, the horde of skeletons casts weren't responsible for taking the problems here, but they definitely help prevent losses from these 12 ghosts. Uh, here in the Misty Forest we see um, Jomen's army once again, and in this case he did actually catch my guys, who had been um, moving up over here with basically the remnants of that living force. So I have, I think this might be my last or one of my last Toad Tribe warriors from that event a long time ago, and a lizard warrior that I might have recruited. Um, but yeah, neither of these guys do me a whole lot of good, um, but it does kind of suck to lose my uh, Centurion and the uh, valuable ghosts, especially the Spectral Standard, which I think I had here. 
Uh, again, we can see the issue with Jones Formation where his flyers go in ahead of everything. Um, but he does, does, I mean, this is everything that he has at this point, so he has enough stuff that he's able to take everything down without too many losses. I think he loses, yeah, he just loses one of the Tengus. And he kills a standard, which I like, and the Limerick Centurion, which I like even more, so that's unfortunate. Here in Hoburgdorf, um, we're able to catch the army that he had been using to recapture provinces. Um, and this is actually a relatively valuable farm province as well. And I'm just, I have just a very big line of ghosts here. Uh, these guys here are always cool because um, of their length 5 weapon and their relatively high attack. I think it's 12 base, so 14 with experience. Um, and that means that they have a very good chance of actually repelling attacks, and they can repel just as well with a spectral weapon as they can with a real one. So always happy to have those on the front line. His Blade Wind casts, while um, not being particularly effective against ethereal units and potentially being blocked by shields, does hit enough guys that it's essentially like having uh, a decently sized squad of archers. Because I'm using Frighten and Terror, these squads here should actually route relatively quickly. Um, so Astral Geyser, the evocation spell that I'm casting, is a magic resistance negated, very large area of effect, very low damage spell. It theoretically just deals one damage, but with DRN it can actually deal a reasonable amount as well, and because it's uh, armor negating, it's going to actually uh, hurt these guys, um, even with their relatively heavy armor. And... Um, yeah, with the Terror and Frighten spam, I'm lowering the morale of these guys here. Uh, that guy was not one of the guys that was affected. Um, yeah, um, some of these guys do have lower morale. Maybe they died. Um, but either way, I'm able to uh, get everything to run away relatively quickly. And then my um, archers and uh, undead are able to route the rest of his forces. So that was that battle, and I killed um, a reasonable number of guys, but all of his mages still managed to survive, so I'll need to continue chasing those guys down in order to actually kill them. Here in the Sinkhole Swamp, Micklin has a lot of Jaguar Warriors, and he is actually able to successfully capture the province. Um, so yeah, this is a huge blob of guys divided into three different groups so that he can bless them all more easily. Um, but it doesn't look like his blessed penetration is perfect, like he is actually possibly missing some of these guys. Um, but it's not enough to, ma to matter for this particular fight, just because, you know, he's got 100 guys, and I don't have anywhere close to that actually defending. Uh, when fighting large masses of sacreds like this, it's worth noting that these guys are relatively slow. They only have 11 AP, and their stats are all very modest. So the only thing that's particularly special about them is that when they're, because they're sacred when they're blessed, they're able to benefit from his bless, of course, um, and his bless actually makes them fairly hard-hitting, um, both because of the increased strength from the blood bless and because of the increased attack from the F minor. Uh, so that means that they're going to be able to kill things relatively easily once they do close into range with them, um, but as far as like actual combat goes, they're not particularly impressive. Uh, here I'm actually able to take a province from Marignan, um, basically just with uh, this chaff squad here. Uh, so this is the uh, guys who had been defending the province which I abandoned that had a lot of PD in it. Um, so they have some of the crossbows which are recruited there, and then these ghosts which had been steadily building up in both the templed province and the um, untempled province which just happened to be in my dominion. Uh, so these dispossessed spirits, while definitely not good at killing things, uh, are able to paralyze these guys to hold them up for even longer. Um, and while this is just the province defense, it does mean that they're not actually killing or getting close to the crossbows, which I would be relying upon to actually do killing for me. Uh, these guys do then route once the uh, units with fear auras get mixed in, and then these dispossessed spirits are able to use their paralyzed attack to paralyze and even deal a little bit of damage to these royal guards. Um, because they're paralyzed, they're stuck here standing in the fear aura for a while, which reduces their morale significantly. So as soon as these guys take any damage, they should run away. In fact, these guys have already routed. The only reason that they're staying there is that they've been paralyzed uh, by the spirits. Um, paralysis after a unit has actually been paralyzed is eventually going to deal damage as well. Um, but they die to friendly fire first. So he does still have a mage here who's just casting some evocation, um, and then he also has these crossbows here, which right now are in melee range with these fear auras, and therefore relatively likely to route as well, and there we go. 
So with that, I'm actually able to capture Damdale from Marignan, and while I do lose a bunch of these dispossessed spirits, and most of these guys appear to survive, um, okay, yeah, so they are, they do actually have a retreat pass, so he's able to get everyone out, um, but I do manage to snag this province and get myself an extra death gem for it, and the stuff that I lose is not particularly important. Uh, for events, I get yet more gold, which is very important, um, and I get additional income, which is interesting because this has zero population. So uh, this income of six is actually never going to go down now because the population can't reduce, uh, can't be reduced any further. Uh, it might go down actually when it hits cold three, but even then it's going to go down to like five as opposed to six. So I have a tiny little bit of income that yeah, even my pop kill isn't going to be able to fully get rid of. So as far as my plans go, um, now that I'm at war with Micklin, this is actually good in a way in that it frees me up to attack him as well. So, you know, I have another target, so silver lining there. Um, I'm going to be moving up this army right over here, and this is the same army that had been chasing down uh, Atlantis' Sacreds and then ran away from this army right over here. Uh, there's plenty of guys here in order to actually kill Micklin's forces. So I have a bunch of these ghosts at the fire, a bunch of these sacrificial dispossessed spirits, and then mages behind them to cast some spells. Uh, apostasy can potentially get me some Jaguar Warriors, uh, since unlike most Sacreds, their uh, magic resistance isn't particularly impressive. Usually Sacreds are like the best of the best of a nation, um, but because for Micklin they are just its generic troops, their magic resistance is just at a very normal human 10. Um, and because he doesn't have an Astral Bless or anything similar to that to help make them more survivable, uh, there's no reason to expect them to be um, particularly resistant to the Apostasy. So here I'm still having my god just search. Um, I have her set to cast Horde of Skeletons as opposed to um, Animate Dead because the skeletons are much better at actually killing things than the zombies are. Um, so we would definitely prefer to have the Solus here. I'm bringing in most of the, or a bunch of these ghosts as reinforcements, even though they're not going to be particularly killy, because they can potentially hold up the sacreds long enough for the horde of skeletons to uh, catch up and then do some actual killing. And I'm not particularly uh, averse to risking my god here because she's immortal, so she can potentially cause some attrition or even hold the province again, and then show up at home once again. Uh, I did manage to withdraw the lizard shamans, um, because... Um, I had already extracted them in preparation for Marignan attacking that province, which means it's very easy for me to get them home and then um, just research here in my capital. With this army right over here, I've divided out the death gems between my two D4 Grand Lemurs, so I'm going to be casting a lot of large Shadow Blasts. So first they're going to be casting just their blessings, or their spells. So Unholy Blessing um, basically just applies the... Um, uh, or is basically being used to just apply the uh, extra HP from the D pass from my Pretender onto my Sacred Units, namely the Shadow Tribunes and uh, the Grand Lemurs themselves. So that's basically just going to help make them a little bit more resilient to any stray crossbow fire, particularly the Flaming Kind that gets launched their way. Um, then the Grand Lemurs themselves are going to just be spamming Shadow Blast. Uh, because of the very high death path, this is going to be hitting um, an area of effect of 8 at 32 range, or sorry, at 40 range, um, and it's going to be hitting for 22 damage within that area. And then because their death path is also, or uh, their death path also helps increase the amount of fatigue that's mitigated, so instead of doing, um, instead of costing them 100 fatigue, it costs them only 33 for each cast. Um, and it's also going to increase the difficulty of uh, resisting the spell with magic resistance. So uh, with Big Death Mage's Shadow Blast is just a really great spell. So yeah, that's the plan here, and we're hoping to catch Marignan moving the army down, and then if my Grand Le or even if we lose this battle and uh, my Grand Lemurs die, then because they're immortal, they're going to respond back in our capital. It's definitely not something that we want to happen, like we definitely do want to have these guys survive if possible. Um, but even if we uh, do lose everything, it's not the end of the world. We at least keep our mages. Uh, losing this number of ghosts is definitely impactful. Um, and as you can see here, there's actually more ghosts in this stack than we have just resting in our fort forts here. So it it's definitely possible for Lemoria to lose enough troops to um, you know, eventually lose a war. But given that I have um, what I believe to be more effective mate support, I'm definitely willing to risk taking the fight here. Uh, Agartha still is basically placid along our border, and still focused south on his conquest of Abyssia, uh, which leaves me free to um, fight my other four neighbors. Uh, and 
because I need to fight um, Miklin now and I have this interesting little border over here, I'm shifting my armies north, which is going to give Atlantis the ability to counterattack and push into my territory here, but I'm okay with giving him that, uh, largely just because I don't want to fight this army yet. Um, I want to first be able to have um, additional research for myself. Um, so I'm going for Thaumaturgy here because I want to hit um, Soul Slay. Uh, so I can start doing some mind hunting to tag individual commanders, and I want to have Evocation 7, um, which is going to be quite a ways away. Um, so yeah, that's the turn. Now into turn 29, we can see the results of my taking the offensive against Miklin. So here in this first battle, we lose a bunch of these dispossessed spirits to the province defense, but that's to be expected because they're just there to get hit anyways. <laughs> And you can see here that the crossbows are able to tag one of his uh, Miklin priests right off the bat. Um, so he, uh, after he casts Blessing, he doesn't do anything with these blood slaves that he's collected. And those nether bolts are actually doing quite a bit of work. You can see that they're wiping out a whole square of infantry each time that they land, um, given that these guys aren't able to make the magic resistance checks, which would be required to avoid their damage. And here, um... These guys are all routing now that they've uh, taken significant losses in melee, and the Tribal King himself actually got hit as well. And with that we win the battle. Um, and pretty much all of our losses are just these dispossessed spirits, which I really don't mind losing. Um, and the fact that we killed a mage in the process is always nice. Here in Plothai, our mercenaries are able to capture another province from Marignan. Um, again, they're only facing off against some light PD. This PD... Um, oh wait, actually this province does have some of the crossbows uh, that had retreated from the previous fight. Because province defense routing and uh, armies have different um, HP route things, uh, his troops actually don't route just because all of the frontline routed in front of them, which means that a significant number remain there to get killed. Uh, here in Pescan, um, we're actually able to capture one of Joman's provinces uh, in which his mages had been hiding. Um, and yeah, this is... This is just uh, one of the armies that I had running around uh, trying to clean up um, the eastern portion of Joman's territory. And just like last time, his mages look unscripted, so they're first casting some self buffs, and then they're casting um, just flying shards, so they're, so they're not really being very effective. It looks like um, all of these commanders are basically just sitting there in that corner right there, while the mages are right over here. And um, this is yet another positioning error, just because it means that if his uh, midfield breaks down, then the mages are going to be attacked directly. It doesn't matter very much in this case, um, just because they, no one has anywhere to retreat to regardless. Um, but it's still generally something to keep in mind for positioning. And with that, I'm able to clean up this province, um, and I killed one of the mages in battle, but none of these mages actually made it out, because I was able to cut him off here in the Silent Wetlands as well. Um, here in Dampdale, uh, it looks like Marignan's army actually retreated back up towards the swamp, um, up there at the upper right. And once again, this is just a big old blob of Marignan's guys, and only a small amount of province defense from me, so not really much of a fight there. Uh, here in Land's End, we 
once again, uh, clear province defense losing dispossessed spirits. And um, yeah, it looks like his army didn't move down here to collect itself as I thought. Here in the Silent Wetlands, it was just province defense, so no troubles there. And that's uh, Jomin's uh, eastern forces all evaporating. Here in um, Micklin's territory, we managed to capture another one of his provinces using that small raiding party, um, which we had sent up north uh, from having captured the Silent Wetlands last turn. So this is kind of nice in that it means that we are able to... Um, it's basically just taking advantage of the fact that we don't have any friendly neighbors. So after fighting one neighbor, uh, we just move north and fight another one. And um, our armies are actually almost routed here, um, just because the uh, ghosts almost died, and then if that happened, then the crossbows would all be in melee. But they managed to survive at least one round in melee on their own, um, and the ghost even managed to lifesteal his way back up to surviving as well. Here in the Eagle Reach Mountains, um, Micklin groups up a whole lot of his sacreds and uh, easily overwhelms the province. Luckily, my pretender is immortal, so she's not going to stay dead. The Astro Geysers weren't as effective as I hoped they'd be. And when his army actually does reach my pretender, she dies pretty much instantly. Um, so I managed to kill only two of the Jaguar Warriors, and I lose a couple of my interesting ghosts, like my uh, standard here and some regular Legionnaire ghosts, so that's not good. Um, on the flip side, he is bringing together a huge amount of sacreds with essentially no mage support, so I should be able to handle that army without any trouble uh, once I do bring mages of my own, and preferably some crossbows to actually uh, shoot those jaguar warriors down. Here in Apriskia, another one of my light raiding parties is also able to take one of Micklin's provinces. So this is again just an advantage of spreading out your troops as opposed to putting a hundred guys all in one stack. Um, I'm able to take these provinces right over here. And yeah, he does actually have a fair amount of uh, defense, province defense here, but luckily this is uh, one of Micklin's forts, and Micklin's uh, national province defense is very weak. It's just these uh, slingers here, which are essentially the equivalent of Jaguar tribe in strength. And while they are actually able to do enough damage to rout the uh, Spectral Legionnaires, the Hordes of Skeletons cast from my mage is able to make up for that, and we're able to uh, capture the Fortress Province, even though we um, can't actually hurt the Fortress itself. Here in the Black Peaks, we see um, Joman's Death Ball moving forward once again, uh, this time to clear off the single ghost that I have on his fort. So nothing really happens here. Uh, the guy just routes. And again, we're treated to another interesting formation where he has just, you know, random summon stuff on the flanks and then uh, lines of chaff in the center. He's using more of these um, Akaoni Samurai with their special morale bonus, um, but they still have very low magic resistance, so uh, they're liable to get nuked down by Shadow Blasts without any trouble. Um, but the Shadow Blasts are more likely to target these higher HP uh, animal things as well. So this is a lot of gems in... in um, summons, and it's also just a lot of fort turns and mages. Like, this is the entirety of his mage core. So, once we can kill that, then we've essentially killed Jomen. Here in the Sodden Merc, um, Atlantis is just sending a stack of sacreds, uh, presumably from his capital. Um, because this is a new big block of sacreds, this is probably going to link up with that army um, that he had been amassing in his fort nearby. Uh, so that can potentially be very dangerous. So looking here, um, he still has this big crossbow build up here, and then now he also has a bunch of sacreds to go with it. So I expect him to group these guys together, just given that his um, previous default play has also been to Death Vault, <clears throat> much like Jomen has. So um, to fight Jomen, I'm going to be basically creating a little Death Ball of my own, um, just moving over... Um, <clears throat> additional ghosts from my fortresses over there, and then uh, black backing them up with mate support from these guys right over here. Um, in order to repel um, Atlantis, I'm actually not 
I'm just not going to do anything for now. I'm going to wait until I have a little bit more research before facing him head on. Um, so I'm just gathering up... Uh, like, I think these guys gathering up over here are just more guys to become light raiding parties that I'm just moving off of the swamp. Uh, this commander is probably just going to go wander somewhere back up this way um, and then go help build a fort or something, just because he's not doing a whole lot of good where he is. Over here, um, I'm leaving behind uh, one ghost in order to hold down the fort in case a Miklin doesn't, doesn't try to break siege, just so I can keep it besieged. And I'm going to move uh, further northwest over here. The idea being that... Um, even though Atlantis and Miklin are allied, um, given that they're both fighting me, I don't think that the nations that are in fact attacking me are actually working together very closely. So if they're not actually coordinating, then if, if I'm sieging down Miklin's fort, uh, Atlantis probably won't try to knock me off of it even though he does border it, which means that I'm essentially facing just an isolated group of Miklin's guys. So um, given that he's going to have some difficulty reinforcing his fort over here without being able to pull reinforcements over from his capital way up here um, or his other forts over in this area, I can potentially uh, siege and even storm this fort and then kill the priests uh, and mages inside of it um, without his being able to have a sufficient front line in order to hold it. And then that's going to basically let me do a whole lot of damage um, with a relatively small body of troops. Additionally, if I'm able to hold on to this fortress, I can build a temple there and then start getting additional free spawn and so on up over in this region, uh, which Miklin's going to have trouble taking back if I'm able to um, basically force him to pay attention to the uh, eastern part of his empire. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to do over here. Given that Marignan dodged my army over here, it looks like he's definitely not looking to fight. Um, and given that this is... Um, very much in Miklin's corner over here. I don't think that Marignan's going to go for it. So as a result, I'm going to be stacking up a lot of PD, and I'm going to be get relying on these indie crossbows in order to handle Miklin's Jaguar warriors. While it's definitely possible for Miklin to bring appropriate mage support to basically render those crossbows relevant, I'm not really expecting him to. I'm expecting him to just attack that with a bunch of sacreds, or potentially even a relatively small group of sacreds, and then having a large number of crossbows there from the province defense can cause more damage than it costs me uh, to put those, that province defense there. Uh, so that's the plan with just dumping PD here, is just relying on those crossbows and a couple additional indie crossbows that I'm recruiting. Well, this army is coming up over here. The idea being that I can cause damage to Miklin's army over here, and then possibly even threaten his capital and his throne fort um, with this big stack of ghosts. This guy is moving back over here in order to collect more ghosts from this fort, but I am going to want some maid support before I handle this army. It's also possible for me to, um, after hitting this province, swing these ghosts back down and then fight Miklin's army that way. Uh, in the meantime, I'm basically banking on Marignan not wanting to uh, take the losses in order to fight this army, given that it's threatening Miklin as well, and that he's going to basically let me take this province here. Um, and if he does fight, then we'll at least get to see the effects of the Shadow Blasts on all of those uh, Royal Guards. Uh, we can see that he has some uh, devils in this army here. Um, which we can also check out uh, from this stack. He's just got four devils. Uh, so those guys are a little bit nasty in that they have a magic attack and a heat aura, but with uh, any sort of flying unit, they typically become much more dangerous the more that you have of them. Having only four devils means that if they fly in ahead of, ahead of his army, then they're just going to get isolated and killed, and if they wait near the back, then they're not really going to be particularly threatening. They're just essentially heavy infantry if he's just stacking them in a line with his other troops, and uh, their fear auras, or sorry, their fire auras make that um, something that you can't reasonably do without burning up your own guys as well. Uh, so given that there's a relatively small number, I'm not too threatened by his devil count just yet. And that's the turn. This is turn 31 of Degeneracy. I bought a Skull Mentor from Ulm um, because he apparently needed some gems in order to do some nuking, and I can definitely use the research given my inability to recruit national mages. Um, I am reviving another Grand Lemur here. Uh, so that's going to be basically helping provide large casters now that my research is getting up there and I can start using them for their big battlefield magic. Um, here, uh, Miklin is pushing deeper into my territory with a bunch of his Jaguar Warriors, um, but this is just that fringe where he, he had that big ol' hundred stack, and there really wasn't much province defense here for him to beat, just a bunch of dispossessed spirits. Here in Relothia, this is the province where I built up a bunch of those... Um, crossbow province defense and recruited additional uh, indie heavy crossbows and uh, or light crossbows rather and yeah just as I suspected he sent only these blocks of um, unsupported sacreds 
And these sacreds just ha don't really have very much protection in either their human form or in their rare jaguar form. So while they are capable of killing these uh, militia guys pretty well, <clears throat> so yeah, while they are capable of killing the militia guys pretty well, they definitely don't tank very well. And the large number of crossbows here remains untouched, and these guys themselves were also able to deal some damage with their javelins and eventually their spears as well. And uh, they do eventually rout. They're not berserkers or anything. In fact, they don't even have particularly impressive morale. And yeah, with that, I'm able to hold the province. Uh, so that province defense more than paid for itself already. Each of these jaguar warriors is 26 gold, and I killed 37 of them. So that's, um, I think, almost double what I invested in the province defense there. So definitely worth, and uh, just goes to show that against B9 monoblessed sacreds, crossbows are plenty good enough. Uh, this is just Joman taking on another province which had minimal PD. He even manages to lose a Tengu in the process somehow. Um, here in Ungbaloth, this is where my uh, collected forces have met up, and I lose a bunch of these dispossessed spirits, but again, I don't mind doing that. Here in Anfalia, we see uh, Atlantis's combined army. Just as I expected, he moved his sacreds in together, along with additional troops and a bunch of these crossbows from the fort. So... Uh, just to briefly go over his formation here, there's nothing really worth talking about here other than the fact that it's very basic, it's just a stack of lines. Um, he has his sacreds in the second row here, which is interesting. Um, these guys are uh, the ones that are vulnerable to crossbow fire, whereas these shielded guys are not. So if I were him, I would probably try to do an arrow lore with these heavy guys, probably put like them on the flanks here so that they're further, both further forward and uh, still allow these guys to run through. I also definitely wouldn't use line formation, given that that's going to provide a morale penalty, and he has enough commanders here um, that he can just break them up into multiple groups, and then... Um, yeah, provide, have a surface area covered that way. Like, the only reason to use line formation is uh, with a, an army like this is if you really wanted to extend the line out and basically just put the lines on the flanks here so that they extend out as far as possible. Uh, but he hasn't done that. He's just putting everything in the center. And given that he is using multiple rows, it would definitely be better to use uh, squares instead. And then that way, it's also a little bit easier to control... Um, when they're going to be hitting the enemy because you're able to use the full AP value instead of being limited to only um, the limited uh, movement that line formation imposes on the troops. So yeah, it's got a lot of these assertuts. His formation does uh, work against the province defense here, and he does successfully surround them, but he could have done this just as easily with boxes as well, just because he has so many more troops than there are defending. Interestingly, uh, he isn't really bringing gems. He has like a skull talisman there, um, but all these guys are basically just casting with their very low um, base paths, and this guy's not going to be putting up any battlefield spells, it doesn't look like. Um, so yeah, that's the army there. This was the province which I'd stacked a lot of uh, PD in earlier. So that's um, basically the source of all these losses here, but it was definitely not economical of me to make that investment. Uh, here in Tiradir, um, we're able to successfully capture this province, losing some chaff in the process. Um, not really much to say about this fight here, other than that I was correct that Marignan was not going to try to hold it. And yeah, it's just some PD crossbows, and those can always uh, those can always cause some losses. Um, here in Plothai, this is him just recapturing that province on his way back out, which I had been able to capture with my mercenaries. And um, yeah, it's the same big old stack. 
Here in Dampdale, I'm able to uh, once again bring that raiding party forward and retake the swamp. And here in Borel, my uh, mercenaries finally meet too much province defense and are eliminated. So yeah, a lot of PD there. And pikes don't do super well against crossbows. They don't even like javelins very much. Looks good for a little while here. They're able to route the front line pretty easily because pikes are good at that. But yeah, once the crossbows are landing in amongst them, uh, they just don't hold up and then I lose the mercenaries. So I get a whole bunch of air gems from this event, so that's great. Uh, I can find a way to use those eventually at some point, I hope. Um, here, a famine strikes the land, which is interesting, but not super impactful. Uh, this isn't even um, what I would consider one of my core provinces, but I would otherwise be enjoying a little bit more income from it. Um, and then here I get yet more magic gems. And here I am definitely not holding onto this fort. So, uh, I'm basically just going to be continuing to try to spread out Micklin here and send out lots of little raiding parties to harass him and take provinces for myself. So here I'm just sending a little ghost scouting party, and here I'm doing much the same. Well, here I am calling for additional spirits and pumping up the province defense and recruiting some additional crossbows. Um, the idea being that uh, fighting these sacreds is a lot easier when I have crossbow support on my side, um, and because I'm in friendly dominion, I can uh, let these guys stay here without needing to uh, risk losing them. And because these guys can all call things, um, I can just have them summon up a bunch of uh, additional troops for me uh, if they he doesn't decide to attack me this turn. Meanwhile, I am hitting this province right over here with another little raiding party. So this is a similar thing to what I was doing up over here with a single horde of skeleton spammer and some ghostly frontline. The reason that I'm confident doing this is that uh, while he doesn't have an while he does have an army here, I don't think that he's going to hit this army or hit this province because he doesn't know what's there. And even if he does, then I'm stacking up a bunch of these guys right over here. So with the uh, province defense uh, combined with this big block of ghosts, uh, the horde of skeleton spammers, and some shadow blast casters of my own, I'm hoping that I'll be able to beat whatever comes up this way, whether it's Jomin's army, Micklin's army, or both. Um, additionally, this is potentially going to be serving as a roadblock to Atlantis if I think that I can actually beat his army uh, with the forces that I have here. So if he does move down, then because his army is much larger, he's most likely going to force the fight in this province, uh, where he fights all of these reinforcements and most likely loses. And if he does move elsewhere, as I'm expecting, then this guy can go up here and successfully capture that province. So it's like a win-win situation, regardless of what Micklin chooses. Uh, this province here is most likely forfeit. I'm not really going to worry about that for now. Um, this pr province here, uh, I'm moving my guys back onto because I'm hoping to bait him into breaking siege there. Um, Given that he does have like a bunch of forces over here, including a huge King of Rain, one of his capital-only Atlantean mages, um, it's definitely possible for him to actually win that fight with appropriate mage support. But given what I've seen of his mage use, I um, think that I can potentially still win. Uh, the other thing that I've got going for me is that um, I'm expecting him to think that I'm going to continue raiding, because that's what I had been doing thus far, just continuing to push my army deeper into his territory rather than trying to consolidate my gains. After all, given that he does have this army over here, it would be kind of silly in order to go for the fight, um, given that he could potentially bring a whole lot more mage support to bear. So with that in mind, I expect that if he does want to cut me off, he's going to move up over this way, either to cover this fort, cover this province, uh, which I am hitting as well, of course, um, or simply attack me in here, where no one's going to be waiting. Um, so if I'm correct there, then he's going to be breaking out over here with a relatively light force of guys, in which case my crossbows, ghosts, and skeleton summoners should be able to actually win, which will help uh, both kill a bunch of his guys and keep this fort under siege. Uh, so that's the plan over here. I'm uh, also going to be consolidating my army right over here. Given that he has only a couple lizard warriors in this province, um, his big old magely death ball is uh, still up there in uh, 101. So unless that army um, moves back down over into here, it's not even bordering this province, which means that I can safely consolidate all of my forces in order to fight it. Additionally, because this is still in friendly dominion, it's still very safe for me to use my Grand Lemurs there. 
Uh, Agartha has a bunch of guys over here, so he might start retaking these provinces. Um, but given that he hasn't been harassing me and I haven't been harassing him, um, I'm hoping that we can continue to maintain our not exactly peace situation, uh, where he just doesn't spend the resources to fight me and I don't harass him in turn. And that's the turn. This is turn 32, and our research goes on apace. I had actually messed up earlier with my Thaumaturgy research and was actually only uh, like one or two points short, but now I have Soul Slice, so now I can start doing the mind hunting if I so choose. Um, and I'm at Evocation 6, which includes one very valuable spell, namely uh, Wailing Winds right over here. So that would force a morale check every turn, which is great if we're going for any sustained fights, um, and of course works very well with the other fear spells like Terror and Frighten um, to help reduce enemy morale to make them more likely to fail those roundly checks. Uh, here in the Misty Forest, I'm able to consolidate my forces easily and just kill um, the province defense and lingering troops that he had uh, just, I think, just retreated into there, and I lose only dispossessed spirits in the process. Here in the Black Gorge, I'm able to successfully raid um, Atlantis' uh, underwater province. So this is actually kind of interesting, in that because my ghosts are uh, all amphibious, I'm able to send these guys underwater, and Atlantis's, uh, or and underwater stuff in general isn't particularly magic resistant. Uh, and it also doesn't tend to have um, magic weapons the way that Atlantis' land troops do. So I'm able to just drop out some skeletons, um, and those guys and the ghosts are able to fight underwater just fine. First fighting this Triton province defense, uh, and after routing them, fighting these uh, this stack of Atlantean troops which he had on hand. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if Atlantis had uh, intended to intercept my army with uh, these Atlantean infantries here, or if they uh, just ha so happened to be moving around um, in that area, but it's definitely a loss for him. Um, these guys are 10 gold, so they're not particularly expensive, um, but you know he does have to actually buy them, whereas these guys are just free spawn, and um, of course the Horde of Skeletons guys are just temporary battle summons. So no major losses on my part, and I'm able to start dipping into the sea. Uh, here in Sailor's Haven, I'm actually able to successfully raid this province using my Skeleton Spammer. Uh, so I was a little bit worried about Micklin intercepting me there, but it looks like he didn't, and I'm able to grab yet another province off of him. And while the Dispossessed Spirits, of course, aren't going to uh, do very much, the Ghosts behind, or the Skeletons behind them are actually uh, capable of killing province defense just fine. Here in uh, Shepherd's Haven, he's able to take the province without any trouble, because that was just an empty province. Um, here in Sinkhole Swamp, I'm able to raid him yet again. Uh, and then here, uh, once again, he raids me back, reclaiming the King's Tomb Desert. Here in Valador, I'm just doing yet more raiding into Light Province defense, so no losses at all. But here, I am actually able to successfully catch his army trying to break the siege. So as I expected, he sent only a relatively light contingent, expecting to see just a ghost there. And I instead have um, a bunch of maid support and stuff. So the crossbows are doing their work, and they're actually the most important part of this army in terms of actually killing stuff. So these guys here, the Serpent Fiends, are not actually particularly threatening. I'd much rather fight these guys than uh, Fiends of Darkness, for instance, with their two magic weapon attacks. Um, their Venomous Fangs is uh, applying a very deadly poison, so if they're attacking like a thug and they do manage to land a hit with their 15 attack and their 14 piercing damage, then, assuming that it's not um, Venom Immune, like an Undead is, uh, it can take a huge amount of poison damage uh, very quickly over time, because the poison damage is going to stack up very quickly, uh, given that it's armor negating and has a very high value. <laughs> However, here they're just fighting ghosts, so while Serpent Fiends are situationally useful, this is not the situation for them. Unfortunately, um, I do manage to lose a couple of my crossbows to the Blood Vengeance from his Jaguar Warriors. Uh, 
but uh, those couple losses there are definitely much less than he loses here, given that he loses two priests, um, a bunch of these fiends which he'd summoned, and of course eight jaguar warriors as well. Here in Renthale, um, Marignan is raiding back closer into my territory here, but he's sending a relatively small contingent and keeping the bulk of his guys over here. It looks like he's also now trying to uh, mitigate how much he loses when fighting me. Uh, here I'm just raiding another province from Miklin, and here uh, Atlantis continues his advance. So, um, I basically needed to choose at this point whether I wanted to fight to the death to defend this province right over here against Atlantis' stack, or if I wanted to shift down and move these guys down against Jomen. And I chose to do the latter. Um, so if I... I uh, want to handle this, these guys right over here. I want to make sure that I have um, as much maid support in one place as possible. And I do have all these guys right over here. So this would have actually been, I think, a decent fight. Like, I think I could have taken it just by moving over um, all these priests right over here, or all these lizard chums right over here, communing up, um, having these guys spam frighten, and yeah, um, like I did just basically have the juice, so to speak, to do it. And then my god could also have uh, come in over here um, by teleporting in, and then uh, she would have been able to cast Wailing Winds, and between all of that, I definitely stood a decent chance of actually beating this army. Uh, however, I would have definitely taken heavy losses and possibly lost some mages as well, but given um, that it is in friendly dominion, I at least would not have been at risk of losing my grand lemurs or immortal or other immortal mages, including my pretender. Um, even though I could have lost the communion of lizard shamans if I'd taken that risk, um, but regardless, I decided not to risk it and to instead uh, just let him continue advancing deeper into my territory. Um, part of that was that I just wasn't super confident about fighting all of these Atlanteans, given how. Uh, difficult it had been to kill them last time, and the fact that I just don't have very many crossbows here. This is just like regular archer PD, which uh, is not armor piercing and therefore not nearly as threatening. Um, so I think that my hope had been to lure him further into my territory, let me mass up additional troops and mages to fight him, and then get a more um, surefire win while using these guys in order to fight the seemingly weaker Jomen. Um, meanwhile, having broken this army right over here, uh, I'm going to basically chase after these Jaguar Warriors here, uh, which I expect are possibly going to respond to my rating, possibly just going to attack into me here. But either way, I think that with my mage support, given the fact that he really hasn't been doing much um, uh, mage support of his own in the process, uh, this is just the, his profit here. So while he can do some big banishments, uh, he can't do any particularly threatening magic the way that a um, fire priest could. Uh, with, you know, flaming arrows or um, fire elementals and so on. Meanwhile, I'm uh, basically moving up over into here, given that this part of, Mich of Marignan's army is gone. So uh, given that this army over here only borders uh, Dampdale, I am basically tempting him or daring him to take a fight here. And then this would let me basically try out my Shadow Blasts against all of these royal guards uh, and, and swordsmen. So yeah, that was that's basically just like a fight that I'm willing to risk, especially given that the mages themselves are immortal. Meanwhile, this guy right over here is able to basically take back this swamp, which I had had once upon a time. And um, yeah, basically Micklin is being raided absolutely to death. He's just really not responding to uh, all of these attacks very well at all. And the fact that he's not using uh, maid support this late in the game means that when he is facing my armies, he's doing so at a massive disadvantage. He's basically just trying to throw sacreds at things which can actually handle those sacreds well. Uh, meanwhile, uh, given that this army had come in over here um, from the north, I'm going to be able to completely span the map vertically once I capture this province right over here. Because it's indie, I don't expect them to think that I'm attacking it, and I can continue to um, use these forces here to actually raid Atlantis underwater. So because Atlantis is... Um, scary magic weapon troops are all land-based, he has to actually move them all the way around over to here uh, before they can start fighting my forces. In the meantime, I'm going to be able to attack a bunch of his provinces uh, using a horde of skeletons, casters, and so on, and fight only the underwater province defense and these much less uh, worrisome Atlantean infantries. So that's the plan. I'm simultaneously raiding two players to death while um, hopefully being able to beat Jomen in a head-to-head -head fight and avoiding the one head-to-head -head fight uh, from the army that I'm pretty sure is still too strong to beat. And that's turn 32.